Database row permissions are here, aka page level access. If you have ever wanted to share certain items in a database with someone but didn't want to give them access to your entire database, this feature solves that dilemma. But there are a few nuances to this feature that are important to know. So let's take a peek, shall we? So as a quick overview, page level access allows you to share certain pages in a database with somebody specific, anybody that you want to, and I will show you how that works in just a second. So what that means is if we have a database like my master task list here, essentially I can share certain things like this one is assigned to my husband. I could share that specific task with him without sharing all of the other pages inside of my database, which is super nice because I can keep some things private if I need to. Not that I care if my husband sees anything to be honest, but I can keep things private if I need to. And this is great, especially when working with teams, you can have personal tasks and team tasks and be able to keep those separate, but they are all still in the same database, which is super nice. So to get this set up, you do need to have a person property. So in my master task list, I have this property for who it is assigned to. And so I can actually use that property, which is already existing to actually decide who can see what. So in order to set this up, we first need to get to the source page of the database. In this specific view of my master task list, this is actually a view of the database. This isn't actually the page itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the full page of this database and go from there. So you will not see this setting if you are not on the full page of the database. So double check that you are. If you are not, you will always see that little arrow that I was just referencing right here. This will allow you to open it as a full page. So what I will do from there is I come up to the share settings up at the top, and this is where you're going to see this new rule for page level access. So to get this set up, all we need to do is click right here to add a new rule. It will allow you to see the person properties that you already have in your database and choose one of those to assign the access to. So once you have chosen, I am going to have who it is assigned to as that specific rule. And then we can actually grant access based on a couple different things. So it can be can edit, which means they can actually edit things inside the task. They can do can comment, which means they can't edit everything, but they can comment on it or they can only view it. So in this case, can edit is great because then they can check it off when they're done and they can work as normal inside the task database without having access to the full thing. So I can go ahead and create a rule here and now anyone in assigned can edit their pages. So getting this set up is actually super easy, but there are a few things that you do need to know about this setting. So as I was saying, if you want to keep parts of your database private, what you're going to want to make sure is that only people invited are able to actually see the database. But what this also means is that people can't just automatically see the database if you give them page level access. So for example, if I have given page level access to who the task is assigned to, if my husband were to come into this specific page that I am looking at with the source database, he would not be able to see anything on this page, which is very interesting. So instead, what we want to do is we need to have a linked view of the database somewhere else where that person is able to see their tasks. So if I head back to my life hub and I have a linked view of my tasks for this specific week showing on the front page, if there was a task assigned to my husband there, he would actually be able to see it here, but he can't see it in the original database. So that's a little funky with that. It's something to keep in mind. So what I actually encourage doing is having your source database in one specific area. So again, I have mine in my master task list right here and they're not gonna be able to see this but what I can do is have a linked view somewhere else like on my dashboard here so they can see their tasks there. So what does this mean for team spaces? Well, I am glad you asked. I don't actually personally use team spaces myself. There are a few different reasons for that. And one being it is very easy to get people on your paid plan if you don't mean to have them on the paid plan. So that's why I kind of stay away from team spaces. But 
but a lot of people do use team spaces and I did create one just for this example. So over here on the side, I have my team space set up with an example database and an example dashboard. And this is very simple. There is really not much here, but it will help for the purpose of explaining this setting to you. So if we come into our example database here, I have bare bones minimum, the name of something and then who it's assigned to. So if we want to enable row based permissions for this specific database, what we're going to do is we're going to come up into the top where we have the share button and this specific setting available. And instead of having it so that everybody who is in this team space has full access to this database, what I actually want to do is change it so that members don't have access. And so what's going to happen is it's going to say, do you want to unlink this from the parent page? And that just means you are taking this specific database settings separate from your team space settings. And so to do that, I'm just going to say change and unlink. And so now members are not automatically able to see this database but owners are. And so you can actually change that so that the owners also don't have access, but I would just leave it as the members don't. And then you just want to double check that your general access is set instead of being everyone in your team space to actually show only the people invited. So now this kind of matches the settings that we had in our previous example in my master task list. If you ever want to change that and allow everybody to see things in your database going forward, you can undo it. You can go ahead and come to this setting right here and restore the settings in the view, the defaults, and you'll be able to change it back to where we started. So now, just like we did before, we are able to add a new rule and we can choose that assigned property and allow them edit access or comment access or viewing access. You can also see which property it is that the permissions are based on by this little key that's right next to that property. So that is something to keep in mind too. It's a nice little way to remember what you have set up. So now that we have our settings all set, just like we did before, we can now come into our example dashboard, which would be where everybody has access to everything. If we come back to our share settings up here, everybody in the team space has full access. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a linked view of that database that we had, because remember, people can't actually see that we have blocked it off, but they can see the rows that are assigned to them. So let's go ahead and pull in our example database. We can just create the same view that we had before and then anything that is assigned to that specific person, they'll be able to see their things there. If you have any questions about linked database views, please let me know. I do also have a masterclass all about databases and how you can get these set up. So I do highly recommend checking that out if you want to learn more about databases. Now, the last thing I want you to know about row-based permissions is that they are currently not able to work on wikis. So as an example, I have a wiki here for my SOPs, which just allows it to have a few extra little bells and whistles. I have a video all about how I created this SOP page. So please check that out if you're curious more about wikis, but Essentially, we have a view of all of our SOP pages here, and then we also have a table view. It allows us to have the verification and the owner and some other nice properties like the last edited time. Those are just native to wikis. So you can keep track of what is expired and what is verified. Make sure everything is up to date. So they're very nice. But what I have noticed is that the row based permissions are not available on wikis at the moment. So if you come up here to the share settings, that little page level access rule is not there. So if you do have something like SOPs that you want to share with very specific people, what I would encourage doing is just creating a normal database for them. It just means that you're not going to have this cool view of the home here and then also the rest of the SOPs. You can add in the verification if you are on the business plan. So you can still create it to have the exact same properties. It just won't be a wiki. And so you then can use the page level access that way. It is just something to keep in mind if you have any wikis set up.
This feature is such a game changer for working with a team and actually something that I myself have been patiently waiting for. If this feature is going to improve your Notion experience working with teams, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I am very curious how many of you will be using this feature. Now, if you saw my video detailing everything about the Notion Sprints feature, the next video that I'm going to do is actually going to be a follow-up to that video all about how I have redesigned my projects database a little bit closer to match the sprints feature, but allow myself a little bit more flexibility when planning my projects. I am so excited to share my new setup with this, but to make sure you're all caught up, be sure to check out the precursor video to this all about Notion sprints here. I will see you in the next one.